Okay, good morning, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. Okay, I'm not doing anything today. I did rate this. Here, I didn't put it in the room. Uh, but I'm not doing it because it's a, it's a buyout. <clears throat> so I'm just, I'm just not doing it. And I'll tell you right now, the very first thing I thought this morning, the first exact thing that came into my head this morning when I looked at the market, which wasn't early, it was late. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a hard day to trade if you don't know what you're doing or you don't have something good. A, I know what I'm doing. That's how I know not to trade today. And B, there's nothing good. And that's also how I know not to trade today. My, in my professional opinion, do not trade the market today as a day trader. <clears throat> there you have it. And actually, when I looked at this market this morning, I thought this is going to be tough here. It's going to be sloppy. But now I looked at this again here, and I'm like, oh, my Lanta. We'll probably make a new high here in the queues today. So you could go long the market today, but I don't think you could aggressively. You could. You could. If you don't, you might miss it. But actually, you could do it. You could do it twice if you get stopped out the first trade. I can call the market long if you want to go long. ATLM very, may very well work. But I don't like that it is a buyout. I just don't do these. And that, coupled with the fact that the market is strong today, which normally doesn't set me off of anything, just tells me I'm not going to do anything today. There's about one trillion earnings this week. <laughs> so there's just no reason to do something today that I don't like. So I'm not. And actually, if you've been doing everything I'm calling and saying, you are having a good month. We're into the last week of October. I know that I was away for part of the month. And some of you traded on your own and some of you didn't trade. But, you know, the reality is that we're here and we're doing what we're doing now. Man, boy, did I call it I said we're probably gonna make a new high before the end of the month we, we really are going to actually because it's you know it's this whole week we could do it today PBY long I even looked at longs I will tell you that I did look at longs I did look at longs in fact the one good long is tree but I'm not doing it this is a good long here you want me to call this Who's going to do this? If I call this as a long today, the stop will be big. The target is massive. It's a price point of one seventeen fifty. I'm not doing it. I didn't rate it, but I know that I know that it, I know that it's good. You want me to call this? I'll call this long if you want it. This is the best bullish gap today. It's in fact the only gap today to play unless you want to do the market. So you got one choice right now, right now, right in the room. You got three minutes. I'll call ATLM short if you want it. I'm not doing it. I'll call tree long if you want it. I'm not doing it. I'll call the market long and the cues of the spy. I'm not doing either one of them. Make a decision. It's a vote. We're going to go with the most number of people what you want. You got three minutes, so put your vote in the room. Whatever the room wants me to do today to call, I will call. I'm not trading anything, and that's what I decided. So right now, you better write it in the room or I'm calling nothing. If you want me to call one of those things, I just gave you three choices. Because I'm only here today for you. Yes, I can do a lecture, and I planned on doing a lecture, but I will call one of those three things if everybody wants me to. So let's take a vote. Shower Singer not trading, and that's a good decision. You had a huge day on Friday, and so did I, and that's why it's like ridiculousness. It's almost at the point, if I don't think I can make at least $1,000 in something, why do it? So I'm not, I'm not, it's just really. Going with my decision will not trade. Not going to trade cycle nut. Wheezy not gonna trade. Frequent flyer not trading either following your call. Boots nothing. I know some of you want to do something though, so be, be, be honest. Great Gatsby, no trading. Saddle Trader, no trading. PBY, wait. Oh, uh, PBY, I didn't look at this. I, I didn't rate it, but let me look at it. I did not rate this. I'm not going to call this because it's not as good as the tree. I don't know what this would rate, but it's not as good. As, this is the long. Boom. Tree. Right there. Or the market. I don't know if PBI works or not. I don't have time to rate it for the open, but that's not the one to do. This is the one to do. Or this is the one to do. Or this is the one to do.
not trading today, you'd rather have a lecture. Now she said no trading. Why won't you do trade? Because the price point, Linda, you can afford that price point. All right, Weezy wrote something up here about the market earlier. I just saw this. Melissa, you mentioned that the QQQs would go up to 111.90 on Friday and 111, which it did. It's just, I didn't even look at that. I, sh I didn't have time to do a video over the weekend. And 113 or 114 by the end of the month, it is at 112.67 now. Yeah, well, it actually went to 113.24 here on Friday. You see that. I mean, you do see that. So it, it almost made a new high Friday. They very well could do it today. It will do it this week. All right, so what I can do a lecture in is, all right, first of all, so does, is no one going to trade? I mean, before I talk here, is, 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 has everybody voted not to trade? Boy, I, I'm giving everyone a round of applause. I have trained you people to actually do the right thing. I don't even, who am I? I, I you're actually doing the right thing. I, I'm so proud of all of you, and I'm proud of myself because I've instilled in you the right thing to do, which is not to trade today, as I instructed you in my advice, in my professional opinion, and you're listening to me. Congratulations. You all deserve a medal and a gold star because we'll make money tomorrow and we'll make money the rest of the week because there's going to be a lot of things to do. I'm very proud of all of you and pat yourself on the back. So let's just talk about the market because <clears throat> this is the only thing that I was really going to lecture on today. And if you did look at P, actually before I talk about the market, if you did look at P from Friday and never followed through, so we got the entire move of the P that we could have gotten. The low of the day in that P was set in the first five minutes of the day. I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. I mean, pretty phenomenal. But actually, it never went back down again. So, and if we wouldn't have the situation we do right now today with the market, I'd say we could look at some continuation gaps to the downside. But I don't feel 100% conviction in doing that based on the market strength today. But P never went down again then on Friday. It actually went over the high and then flipped. All right, hold on here. Ashley wants me to look at KMI. I'm going to look at KMI, and then we'll talk about the market. KMI did gap down. This is just a continuation gap. I did not rate this. I saw it this morning. I put it in the room as a, as a watch for a secondary watch if you wanted to watch it for continuation. I just think this has had a really tough time in here, Ashley. The day of the gap was the day this thing should have rolled over. It, it, it actually had a short in it, but it was very tough to do, if you remember. This was Thursday. I think it should have worked smoother here. It definitely should have broke on Friday. It didn't. I know the market gapped up Friday and was strong, but I still think, as you know, these gaps work on their own. This thing should have fallen off a planet, either Thursday or Friday, and it didn't. I know it gapped down today, but am I going to do this? No. It's Again, we have to contend with the market, and, and this didn't even go on its own in the day of the earnings on its own or the next day in its own. So I just don't feel like dealing with this thing. It's, I'm not saying it's not a short. It's obviously a short. In the last three days, the price has dropped, but it's not acting right to trade as an intraday trade. I mean, this was really very sloppy as an intraday trade the day of the gap. Blew over the high and it still fell. All right, so just going back quickly to review the P trade from Friday, we got this whole thing. We all got out a different number. I don't even think it mattered. The funny thing was the biggest size of anyone, I think, uh, was Shower Singer. He had, he had a bigger size in it than me. Shower Singer, just for, just for show, if you had held that all the way down to the, to the low in there, how much would you have made? Let me just see here. Sometimes I go back and look at that just to wonder. I think you said he got out of it at 12.25. If you had held that for 75 more cents... Uh, this is what's so crazy. I mean, you can never know. I just want to look see what the exact time was it hit it. I think it hit it at... That was right before 9.40. 9.37. See here? here? Here's the time you look at to get out, which we did, and then... Did I have 11.50 written down as a number? I think I actually did. I think I actually did. This is crazy. But it never, never, never went right again then the rest of the day. Why? Do you see how this ran up here then and held the high 
and at the time of the day it could have set up. You could have reshorted this. If you did, you would have had to get out or you would have lost. It moved in here 40 cents, but it never went, went anywhere. The problem with this, and the reason that I didn't like this then to retake, is because of the massive move it had in the morning. It actually did open and swoosh. And then I saw after this that it wasn't setting up right. Now, you might have thought it was okay still because it did hold the high, but it didn't sell off then right after that. Time of the day was okay. I just felt that after this, it should never have retraced like this, but it did. And so I never called it again for the room and I hope no one did it. And as you see here, it went over the high after 10 o'clock and it was done and it never set up again. That was totally unexpected that that stock would move that much in that short a time frame. I mean, that was totally unexpected. I did say it was an NCOF play on Friday, but to be honest with you, that was completely unexpected. I was, it was a wonderful surprise to have on a Friday morning. And sometimes we get a surprise on a Monday, but we just, we just didn't get it today. We didn't, we didn't get anything today. And part of it is the, is the market. So let's go in talking about the market. And, and everyone should have had an amazing day on Friday, no matter where you got in and where you got out. I wish there was a way that I could, gosh, it's like I, I'm able to see these things when I say NCOF. I, I wish I had a way to see that something would actually swoosh before it swoosh. I, I, I haven't been able to develop that skill yet. I see the swoosh and then we play it, but I wish, I wish that I was able to predict that a swoosh would happen. I, I haven't been able to do that yet. Let me, let me just go back and look at something here, actually. <laughs> Seattle Trader says me too. Yeah, I'm like, I just thought of that now. I'm like, I wish that I was able to predict that. Let me just look at something here, though, before we look at the market. Let's look at this the night before. Let's look at the morning. No, I mean, there was, there was, there was a lot of volume in this, even in the morning. There was, there was just a, there was just, no, look, I mean, there was actually a lot of volume in P in the morning, so I can't even say. I mean, that's, I think that's what was the most tremendous thing about this. The most tremendous thing about the fact that this opened and swooshed was the level of the trading action and the volume in it in the, in the pre-market. And, and then not only did it continue, it got bigger. It got larger, huger. That's even a word. So yeah, I, 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 we, we, I know what the swoosh is. I teach you that in the class. We play it, we do it. I wish that I, I predict these NCOFs, they work. I just don't know how or when swooshes will occur. It's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal thing. It's just a thing that you have to see when it happens in live time. Maybe one day I'll be able to, to predict that too. Anything's possible. Weezy said I'm amazing regardless in choosing trades that work, thank you. And Weezy, your number one goal this week is to is to practice your sizing right and to make your goal. You made your goal last week in one trade in P. That was great. And actually, a lot of people should have made their goal for week in P. Harris is saying, Harris is here in a trial. I don't care about the size of the gap. Harris, I care about everything. There's nothing that I don't care about. I care about this trading here for one second in a millisecond. As a, as a day trader, you got to care about a lot of stuff. I think it's it's a, that a lot of people just don't look at enough things to care about. Is that a reason I do a trade or don't do a trade though? Absolutely not. So I'm not sure how to answer that. It's too generalized of a question. It's trading is not black or white. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a puzzle. It's like a puzzle and you have all the pieces of the puzzle together and they fit together and all of a sudden you have a beautiful puzzle. It's like when you're building a house and you have all the bricks. You have you have one wall done. Yeah, it looks great, but you can't live in there and be sheltered from the storm. You gotta finish the house and build it. And you've gotta have four walls and a roof. So it's kind of like not just one thing or two things. It's everything together looking at it. And not one all thing is the be all end all that puts me off of a trade or onto a trade. Not even the market. Okay. Now let's talk about the market here right now. Now let me see what ATML did before we actually, I didn't call this, 
but it had a little 10 cent move. Here, this is what I thought this was gonna do. Move, but not really go anywhere for any target. You could have shorted this here and made 10 cents. If you did, it would have been out. It's a, it's a buyout. All right, let's talk here about the, let's talk here about the market. Okay, so last week on Friday, the market gapped up. I don't remember why it doesn't matter. It was on Friday. We saw this rally that held amazingly well, really all through the time here of the first two weeks of October. This was when I was away. And, and I don't know what kind of day trades everyone had that was trading. You might have had some choppy days in here. <clears throat> you might have had some choppy days in here because of the fact that the market was to some people look like it was gonna hold the resistance here, which we did not get over until Thursday of last week, the resistance being 108.72. We only popped over that number here on the 22nd, which was last Thursday. So before all of this happened, this might have been choppy trading in here when people thought we were gonna hold. I don't know, I wasn't day trading, I was off, I was in France. But the one thing that gave me the confirmation that the market was definitely higher was as you know the stock swoosh that was negated the big sell-off that happened after that and didn't go anywhere the gap up after that did go somewhere and rallied and gapped up again and then when we came in in here we held and we didn't have to and do you see the level we held actually we held a level that is is a is was already a level we just went back down on top of it here it is so there was just a bazillion things that were telling me the market was higher. But the biggest thing was the negation of the swoosh. I emailed, Surf Dog, are you in here? I emailed you to send me a one minute chart of the cues in the spa, you never sent it to me. Can somebody please send me a one minute chart of the QQQs and the SPY from uh, uh, August 24th? I cannot go back that far in any of my platforms. To look at the charts if you can please send it to me i would appreciate it i need to save it and i never did i emailed you that last week you didn't send it to me anyways that was the biggest thing that gave me the confirmation the market was gonna really that this was the low for the year and that the market would continue rallying after this i wasn't sure the timing of when we make the new high it does appear to be very soon it it could even be today This is a neutral gap in the market today. We closed on Friday at 112.72 and we opened at 112.70. Very unusual for the market to be gapping neutral. And what does that tell you? It tells you the market is so, so ridiculously strong. It's, 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 it's hilarious actually, because the market very well could have actually fallen today. And someone was asking about size. The market actually closed at 109.71 on Thursday and then gapped up on Friday to 112.66 the market gapped up like four dollars overnight we were sort of gapping down at one point this morning we could have we could have fallen we could commit we could have come in today and actually if we can if we we did come in today which we're not but we could and if we did we still would be strong we could come in and break the low from friday and still be strong so this was a big gap up that happened here thursday to friday but we, we and we could have broken it today and we still could but i don't think we will and even if we do we're still strong so either way, this has nothing to do with anything of the sizing. It still was a long on Friday. And today, even if we break this and we fall into this area of support, we're still strong. Nothing goes in a straight line up or down. And that's why being a day trader is actually the easiest way to trade if you know how to do it because you're in and out and you're in and out, you're in and out, you're in and out. Are you just in and out one day and you're in and out the next day and you're in and out the next day? You don't have to worry about this wiggly jigglies. If you're in the market long, you're having to worry about wigglies and jigglies because you might have wanted to take profits in a market long if you were up from way back here on Friday. But if you do, you're gonna miss the blow. The blow that I've been predicting for the entire year or more than that now, which is which is really hilarious because I've been predicting the market would blow. It's not done it. It's rallied. It made a new high this year. It's come in. It's going to make another new high, but it really hasn't done the blow up. And, and, and that is still going to play out. Why? Because there's actually people that have shorted the market 
I mean, if you look at this chart here, can you imagine that anyone would still be short? They might be because they're reading this as resistance that held or they're reading the resistance up here that it will hold and they feel like the market actually still has rallied too much and therefore needs to come in. But if you look at the gap and you understand all the gaps that have happened in the market going all the way back from the beginning of time, even the last year, you, you would never, never not be long the market. You would either be long or nothing, but you definitely wouldn't be short. But if you don't understand gaps, you might actually be short this market. And there are people that are really short the market. There are, and 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 they are, there are. They're betting against this trend holding. They feel that the market is going to retest the high and make another top, and then maybe come in. And and their target then for the short actually is is through the break of this anomaly day. But I'm telling you that if you understand what I taught you about the stock swoosh, you know that that's impossible and will not happen. And actually, I said this before, and I'm not, I'm not saying this with 100% conviction, but I'm saying there's a possibility. I'll know in time. I'll know in time. I'll know in time, but there's a possibility that the way that this transpired, when the market opened the day, the gap down, swooshed, and negated the swoosh, there is a possibility that this may be the low in the market for a very, very, very long time. I don't know that yet for sure, but I've never seen anything like it. I have never seen anything like it. I may never see anything like it again as long as I live in the market. So if you don't understand that, you, 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 you might think that the market still is short and that the market had a big run up, is going to retest the high and come in again. In fact, you might even have more shorting up here before it goes over the high again. I don't even know. But I really think we're going to just go right over it. But who knows? We might not. And then we're still going to before the end of the year. But anyways, people sh target short in this or this in the break of the bar. The other thing that tells me this, and we did have this discussion when the day happened, and everyone was saying when, when, where were Melissa, where would the market have to go, where would it have to fall, where would it have to gap to actually change trend, because I said the market was still in an uptrend after the day of that gap down and after the fall that we were still holding the uptrend, and many people disagree with me, but as it turns out, I'm, I'm right, and I'm going to be right, and I am right, but we were still holding the uptrend even in the gap down. I rated the gap, and the gap didn't rate good as a long it wasn't even close. I think it was 16. That's not close. It wasn't a long. And it, I mean, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a short, I'm saying. It wasn't a short. I rated 16 for the bearish system, so you couldn't have shorted it. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, we were so close to breaking the trend in the gap down, which again rated 16 points, so you couldn't have shorted it. We were so close to that, and we didn't do it, that that told me that we're not going to do it also. Because remember, the one thing that we've learned about trading is that stocks and the market want to do the easiest thing possible. And it would have been so easy, so easy for the market to change trends not because of the gap down, although that would have helped the weightiness of the fall, but because of the swoosh, because of the stock swoosh that came in, because the market opened and stock swooshed down $10 in five minutes. It would have been incredibly easy for that to hold and drop another $10 on the day and break through the floor of the earth, but it didn't happen. And in fact, not only did it not happen, the opposite thing happened, which is what I was just trying to describe to you. Okay. So I'm just using the information I know now to tell you we're still holding the uptrend and we're going to make a new high before the end of the year. It looks like we're going to do it by the end of the month. Based on that, that's all I know. I do feel, though, based on what I just described to you, that this possibly could be a low for a while. I'm not predicting lows and highs. I'm just telling you that it's, we're not assured. And we're not going to go back down and even retest that. We're, we're just, we're not even going to retest that. It's like not even close. Okay. So for those of you that are in the swing trade for the market long, try to stay with it. Some people probably will have a hard time doing that that have been in the market long in here who bought after the anomaly day. 
but you're really going to miss the big, big move that's going to come in over the high. I think it's going to happen immediately. I don't even think it's going to retest it and not get over it. I think it's going to happen immediately or almost immediately or even in a gap, which I kind of said the entire time. I mean, I really back here when I was waiting for us to blow and waiting for us to blow and waiting for us to blow, and we never blow. We rallied. We rallied. We made a new high and we did in the SPY too, but we never had the blow day. I actually think the best case scenario for this to be to do it in a gap. So get ready. You could, we could wake up tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, Friday morning, and the market could be gapping up over at all-time highs here. On a, uh, you could just get up in the morning. It could just be doing it. It could just be doing it. One of these days, you could get up, and you could be like, oh, like, th like the opposite of this. One day, you could roll out of bed between now and the end of the year, and instead of seeing the market crash like this, you see a massive, huge, giant gap up in the market, breaking over every high. Don't, don't think it can't happen. I'm, I'm not saying with 100% conviction that could happen, but I'm telling you it very well could. There's a chance that it could. And you know when I say that, you know that it could. So there you have it. Like don't think that's not out of the realm of possibility. The all-time high over here is 120.50. And Harris just asked me about the size of gaps. Do you know what? If we roll out of bed and the market caps up over 120.50, we're freaking going long. We're going long. We're going to go long that gap. And I don't care if it gaps up 100 points, we're going long the gap. Like, do you understand what the power of that gap will be? Like, we're just going to go long it. And, and we won't even short that day. We won't, we won't be able to short that whole week. Because we're going to go long. We're just going to go long that gap and everything I feel like going long. And I'm, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen that way or set up that way, but I'm telling you it very well could. And if it doesn't go on long, and if it gaps up like a massive gap, I'm going long it. So it's like sometimes I, 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 I do gaps that are big. Sometimes I do gaps that are small. It's nothing to do with that. It's nothing to do with that at all. But the point I'm trying to say is don't be surprised if we roll out of bed one day and the market in the QQQs is gapped up to 125 or 140 or something crazy. Don't, don't ever be surprised about something that you see in reference to power money. It could come in both directions, but in the case of the market, I think it's going to be so surprising when when this happens here, when it does the blow, it could happen in a gap or a live trading day, but I'm saying don't be surprised. So those of you that are in the market long overnight, try to hold it to get that tremendous payout day. You, That's really what you want, you know. That's when it's really all going to pay off. Let me just look at something here. Where do I think that could actually happen? Let me just let me just look at something here. Hold on. really see how good I am. It is so crazy that no one thought the market was higher. I mean, <clears throat> every sign was there it was. It's just gonna happen. I can't. I can't see exactly any specific number here because there's really not that many. That's gonna be the one that actually makes it do something like that. It it'll be a spontaneous thing that happens. It'll be as spontaneous as when we see things that swoosh, and 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 that's what's so amazing about it. It'll be a spontaneous thing whenever it happens. I don't even know the number that will create it. Again, I don't have access to the information. I just see the gap after it's occurred, and then I decide if I'm going to play it long or short, and I rate it. But I'm, I'm telling you, I understand enough about A, gaps, B, power money in the market and what institutions are doing with it, and C, you know, the overall trading price action here that's been transpiring and the way that it's played out that 
it, it could it could happen exactly the way that I said that the, we just get up one morning and there's a tremendous gap up over everything in the queues and, and and that gap will be playable long I just don't know I just don't know where it is I mean it's but I, I can tell you one thing, it's not gonna happen at night. If it does happen, it won't happen at a night time. It'll, it'll happen in the morning. It'll happen in the morning. It'll either happen like from a Friday to a, uh, Friday to a Monday, or it'll happen in a morning during the week because it will be spontaneous. I can't wait to see if it plays out that way. Boy, if you if you are someone that runs a hedge fund, which nobody here does, but and I don't either, but if you if you did, what what an amazing time to be trading this market. I mean, this is an amazing time. And you might have gotten hurt here if you didn't know what you were doing. But if you did, you didn't. Didn't. If you didn't know what you were doing, you got hurt. If you did, you didn't. You, you might have actually profited. But I'm just saying, what an exciting time to trade if, 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 if you know how to do this and you invest money. Uh, Great Gatsby sent me the chart. All right, let me bring it up here. Hold on. Great Gatsby sent me the chart for the swoosh. Let's look at it. Does anyone have any questions in the meantime while I'm bringing this up? And also, will you send me the SPY one too? Oh, I can't load. Let me just see if I can unload the image. This other type of file I can't open. Hold on, let me try. Oh, there it is. All right, this is too big. I'll take this, but I can't look at this right. Get, just give me this one clip of the five minutes. Just give me that. Here, I'll save this. Just send me the send me a smaller image, bigger of the of the whole thing. Can you do that? I mean the five minutes, not the whole thing. Sorry, I don't even know what I'm saying. Give me a tighter image of the first five minutes, please. I got it. I brought it up. Does anyone have any questions about the market? Does anyone have any questions about anything you want to go over right now while Great Gatsby sending me that one minute chart? Let's look at what we have out tonight while he's going over that. But going back to Harris's question about the size, don't get caught up in one thing or two things in reference to deciding what to do. You, you, you can't do that. I mean, if it was that easy, then I would just roll out of bed every day and just, just never even read anything because I can, I can see things and eyeball them so well. I still go through and rate my gaps and fill up my worksheet every day and I'll do that forever if I want to continue to make money. You, you can't just look at one thing or two things. It's it's everything together. Once you learn how to do it, you put it into practice and that's how you go forward and you make money. Many, many day traders just wanna, they, this is why people wanna buy indicators or, or, or do whatever so they can just say, oh, there it is. No, it's, you have to look at everything together. I'm sorry to say, but what's the big deal about doing that? It's not a big deal and it's perfectly fine. If that means you get it right, then great. If that means you make money, then you just gotta do the work. It's a few minutes every morning before the open, that's it. This has earnings out tonight, Broadcom. Nah, this probably gaps up, but I'll look at it as a short, but I don't think it will. Cake, oh, Cake has always been good to us. Spready, whippy, we've always done well in the cake. Cake is a watch for tonight. <laughs> I have no idea what this does, but I think the Broadcom gaps up. SWFT, Swift, this is out tonight as well. Another one I like. Let's just take a look at this one here. Yes, this is good. And PMCS. We might get Swift tonight, but Broadcom's probably a long. In fact, I, I know it's long. It's gonna, it's gonna cap up. Uh, this isn't moving, I don't know why. Uh, what happened to Linda's ATML? Oh, this had a second little move in it. You could have done this, got all out, and you could have done a second little guy. Linda, did you do this? I just didn't want to do this for 10, 20 cents. All right, tonight's watches. 
It actually had a move in it. It worked. And what was the other one? Somebody wanted somebody wanted me to look at it and I didn't like it. I didn't even read it. 3S VRX. Um, before I forget, I'm doing day two today and tomorrow from 12 to 4. For those of you that want to retake it and email me, email me. Those of you that have been struggling with the ratings, maybe you come and sit in on the class today and tomorrow in the afternoon because if you don't have anything to do. Because some of you had, had some questions about the ratings and we can go over that in the class. The new people and I'm saying retakes. VRX did not work. Do you see this here? Siri, do you see it? I didn't like it. I, I didn't rate it. I, I, I don't know if you did, but it wasn't good. Okay, I hope you stayed away. Uh, Baba? Uh, this is out tomorrow morning or tomorrow night? Finally, this chart is trying to settle itself and situate itself. This, this chart has been, uh, well, this chart has been like not had enough time in it. Look at this here. It's only even a, a little bit more than a year. It's still really not enough time information, but oh, this is going to gap up too. Baba probably gaps up over 90. This is just, this is just what I see. I bet this gaps up over $90. Expect the unexpected in the next week. We're going to be very picky. Who knows? It might do a long. Let me look at JetBlue. But there wasn't any longs today. Oh, Tree. Let me go look at Tree and see what it's really doing. JetBlue. JetBlue I like. I like JetBlue. If this is out tomorrow morning, I love this if this gaps down. I don't know if it will, but I really love that to gap down. We might get that tomorrow. Uh, what happened to the Tree? 50 cent spread. <laughs> it's hilarious. Is it even moving? <laughs> Look. Is it even moving actually? <laughs> yeah, there apparently it is. Anyways, I can't I can't call this intraday right here. This looks like it has very low volume and a Jimonga spread. <laughs> no one's going to do it anyways. It's, it's attempting to hold in here and we'll probably rally, but I, I'm glad we didn't do that one either. All right, does anyone want me to go over anything at all? Anything at all? I did a little talk and lecture here today in the market. Uh, I didn't call the market long because it didn't really set up right. And remember, it's still strong even if it breaks a little from Friday. The SPY is so, 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 so strong. I doubt this breaks a little from Friday. If it does, does it mean we're lower? No. really think that there is a tremendous possibility all right I wouldn't have said it there's something there I must have seen something there for me to say that there's I just that was very spontaneous and usually when I see stuff that works like the way I saw Google and Amazon and Netflix it's usually just whatever comes right out of my mouth it's almost like I just my brain just sees it I I'm telling you there's a reason I must have said that it's it's probably gonna play out that way and I'm, I'm not saying for sure because I don't know it doesn't matter but there must have been, a, there, there's something there that I saw and I don't know what it is. There's something there I saw or I wouldn't have just said that this, don't be surprised if we gap up, if we get up in the morning and the markets had a, had a, had a gap up over the high. And it, and it could even be big. I, there's something there that I must see and I, I don't know what it is. I cannot intellectually describe it, but I know that I understand so well how to read the movements of money and price that there must be something there that I see there I wouldn't have just told you that. It, I can't wait to see what happens. And I'm not in the market long, and, and I should be. <laughs> I should be in the market long overnight since 2013, but I just day trade. Does anyone have any questions about anything at all? If not, if you want to retake the class day two, which is this afternoon and tomorrow, it's 12 to 4. We're going to trade all week. We're going to get lots of good stuff. It could be SWFT tonight. It could be cake. BRCM is long. And the jet blue is tomorrow morning, which I would love to do. I don't know if it gaps down. Okay. Baba, I feel very confident will gap up. And the BRCM. But more so more so the Baba. Okay. 
Any questions from anyone about anything? So we're going to close the month of October strong with our trading. That's all that we need to do. And then we're going to start November out, and we're really going to go at it. Okay? I found a way to live with my temporary issue with the charts here until I get the computer upgrade that I can be using eSignal every day. I just can't use it every day here with this right now during the live one minute. But I found a way to live with it. Obviously, last week was a good week. Taking non-ideal conditions and turning it into the best that I can. Does anyone have any questions? If not, I'm going to let everybody go. Okay? Email me, like I said, if you want to sit in on uh, class this afternoon. And for those of you that have been having issues with ratings, that's my suggestion. Weezy, do your work on your trading this today, this afternoon, or this morning while you have time with your sizing. Okay, great, guys. We'll talk about it tomorrow. All right, have a great day, everyone. Some of you I will see back at noon. The rest of you I will see back tomorrow morning, bright and early. Okay, Linda, very good. All right, have a good day.